Hello, in this video I'll answer a request as to how to model this kind of tire and get these kinds of details and I'll show you how you can easily subdivide this using open subdivision. Therefore providing a practical example of how you can use open subdivision to get these kinds of sharp edges and also smooth curves as well. So before I actually create anything I want to kind of see how many, what kind of topology I'll need. In order to get this kind of detail I will need one row of polygons and the second one for this and then the third one and as for how many we need in the center I can kind of count one two three four and then this is also four five six seven so I will center this in the x-axis go to the front viewport and I'll create a plane going from here to here I just kind of move it right here. First thing is that we have kind of like this rise here. So I'll give this a dark gray at a poly, and then I will insert two segments here. Right there. And I will move this right here. And next I will insert two segments through here and then I will insert six through here alright now I will also make sure I have vertex table to activate snaps and I will create a few copies make them instances this just allows me to see how the right and left side connects together I also want to insert, actually, select these two edges, loop, go to soft selection, activate this, and now you can just increase the falloff. This graphic right here shows you how the falloff actually looks. And when you increase the pinch values and bubble values, you'll see how it changes. So you can modify this to get the exact falloff you want. And then I can move this down. I can kind of do this to match this curvature here. I'm not matching it exactly, but I just want to show you how you can. So now in order to get this part looking a little bit like this, I'll have to select this, maybe move this down. Maybe turn on the edge constraints and move it like so. And I'll also insert one more loop through here. And then I'll have to move this back a little bit. You can see when I do that we get this strange topology, so I may have to retopologize. Activate vertex snaps, maybe cut this from here to here for, for now. and then I can move this back now I need to get this detail on the other side as well so I will select this and then I will hold shift and kind of create a copy here, clone to element then I will apply mirror so I'll just press MI mirror on the x-axis and then at a poly once more I can move this right here I will hold control click here to convert this to vertex and here under options I'll go to enable axis constraints so first I'll activate the x-axis by clicking right here on the gizmo on the x section here activate snaps and then I will move this right here and now what I pretty much want to do is align it, align it right here. So now I'll make sure that the z-axis is active and I will snap right up here. And now I will apply new edit poly and, and I insert a loop through here and delete these areas right here. 
here and then weld now select it all and weld and now I will select these polygons and bevel it out I will select these vertices activate scale edge constraints and scale them inwards a little bit make a few more adjustments here I will select all of these, loop them and then make them planar on the x-axis same for the left side as well. Now what I pretty much want to do is I will isolate these. I will select this, Alt X, make it transparent. And what I pretty much want to do is activate snaps and just kind of snap this over here. I'll turn off axis constraints. So I pretty much want to make sure that these align. And since I'm using instances, that means that it will also happen for the top as well. pretty much just like this making sure that they all align and for the top the top is also aligned so now I can collapse this now I will delete these and now I will create 20 copies activating snaps and snapping from here to here and making sure it's a copy and 20 now I will select this one attach, click on the attach list here select all of these and attach them all together select all the vertices and weld and now we can test out if it worked it looks like a few parts are not fully welded so all I have to do is simply increase the weld threshold a little bit make sure you don't increase it by too much otherwise you'll get some terrible results so just increase it by a little bit and then check to make sure there's no holes or gaps or anything alright as you can see we have some slight deformation here but we can use open subdivision to fix that Now let's apply the bend modifier. Let's increase the angle to 360. Let's set the appropriate bend axis and the appropriate direction, which in this case is either negative 90 or 270. Now as you can see, it doesn't quite reach all the way. So all we need to do is simply increase the angle until it does. And then edit poly edge mode, select these two edges, loop them as you can see because of the topology it's going to loop all the way so what I'll instead do is simply switch to vertex mode and select them all myself and weld making sure that you use a slightly higher value and I can test out to see if there's no gaps here Alright, now that we've done that, 
I will go into border mode, select these, and scale it inward. All right, and now I will extrude inwards here and extrude here. Now I will select these edges, ring, and connect two segments here. Hold control and click here to convert to vertex and then scale in the x-axis like so. Get a little bit of a bump here. Now you can see that the edges here are uneven. So what we can do is go to loops and loop tools and I can select all of these and then loop it and now I'll activate edge constraints and click on space and notice how now they are evenly spaced so this is before and this is after and now I will right click and collapse it making sure this is all using one smoothing group or no smoothing groups right now and I'll apply preset and open subdivision alright so then I will exit our isolation mode alt Q and we can see what kind of creases we need to set up I'll just move this forward here you can actually center it and kind of move this off to the side okay so how many crease groups do we need here exactly well if we look at the top here this up here is pretty sharp got some sharpness here as well so those can all be one crease set we've got a slight curve here so those can be their own crease set and actually all of this can be one crease set but it looks like here maybe a little bit softer here we need to have smoothness so we pretty much need to create a number of crease sets here so I'll go into edge now this is actually an example where using the crease the edge selection methods here can't quite give you the results that you want no matter what you select no matter what you change here you'll always either have too many edges or too little edges so this is actually an example where we can do the crease setting in editable poly because now we can use all the tools that we have available here the more advanced selection tools so what I can do is switch to polygon and I can turn on the by angle feature and I can pretty much go here maybe turn on ignore back facing and I can pretty much go here and select all of the tops here being careful not to select the back here alright so here I've got all these polygons selected and now what I want to do is decrease the by angle value here to let's say 25 and then select this right here alright now all these polygons selected I will hold shift and click here to convert this to the border edges if you simply hold control and click here you get all the edges if you hold control shift you get only the center edges but if you hold shift you'll get only these outside edges right here and I will give this let's say a crease of 0.8 right now the value doesn't really matter we just want to set it to a certain value right here alright so you can see how using the polygon selection mode and then shift and then clicking here will allow us to select these edges here otherwise maybe a little bit difficult using the crease set tools and I actually want to save this polygon selection in case I need to use it again so here at the top I'll enter in one and I'll press enter and now if I deselect by clicking here I can click on this little arrow select one and my polygons are back selected it's kind of a way to save your work alright so now you can see that these edges are sharp as well you can see how they're sharp and how they're sharp here and then they go into smoothness so we need to select these edges here in the center as well now for these three center edges I couldn't really find a method to select only them regardless of what technique you use you'll also end up selecting other edges so the only way to really do this one is to select it yourself 
So I'll get back to you once I've selected all of these edges here. And with these edges selected, I'll set the crease to 0.6. Alright, so now we have 0 0.8, 0 0.6. Now if I exit isolation mode, we may need also a separate crease set right here. Because we want to control this curve. And with these edges selected, I'll set a crease value of 0.4. And I'll also enter in 3 here to save these edges as a selection here. So I can always select it if I need to. So now we have three different types of crease strengths available in Edible Poly. And there's also a way to move them into the crease set modifier. Here under Options, we have an option called Auto Generate. Now, you may need to increase the tolerance or decrease it depending on what you get. Here I'm going to increase the tolerance to 0.3. If you have Keep Existing Sets on, you will have the existing sets as well as the new sets taken from Edible Poly. But in this case, I don't have any sets existing, so it doesn't really matter if I keep this on or off. So essentially, when we click on Auto Generate, we'll be importing the creases from Edible Poly into their own crease sets here. So when I click on Auto Generate, it tells me that operation will result in three crease sets. Continue, I'll say yes, and here they are. So I'll right click here, select Elements and Set, and here they are, the ones in the center. I'll right click here, select, el select Elements and Set. It's giving me these. And if I right click here, select Elements and Set, it's giving me these right here. And as you can see, I actually modified it. I made 1.1, 1.5, and 1.9. So now it's time to apply open subdiv and see what I need to do, what each set needs to be. So here I made the first set and the second set both have 0.5, and the third set I gave them 0.1. What I can actually do is merge the second set into the first one by simply right-clicking here, select elements in set, and then right clicking on the first one and add selection to set. But I'll keep them as two different sets for now. So if we look at the reference image, here we have hard edges and here we have a smooth edge. And that's exactly what we have here in the tire. And if I press F4 to turn on the edges, you can see that we accomplished this without having to add a bunch of extra edges here. All we had to do was set up the creases. And then it goes from being sharp to being smooth. And if we look at the reference image once more, you can see that here we have three sharp edges here that transition into smoothness. And that's exactly what we have here. Three sharp edges that are sharp here and then transition into smoothness here. That's exactly what we want. And open subdiv makes it easy. Here I have the Iceland display on. But pretty much we have this very simple topology. Working with open subdiv definitely makes things a lot faster, a lot easier, a lot simpler. Thank you for watching and take care.